I'm hoping we take more time now with our work, with our expression. We are going through a very big renaissance of understanding and expression because we now have a lot of digital contents. We now are changing the way we approach to image. We're changing the way all we look at shows and fashion and, and so on. So we have one thing to do, to get on with it. Hi, this is Imran Ahmed, founder and CEO of The Business of Fashion. Welcome to the BOF podcast. It's Friday, July 16th. The fashion photographer Mert Alice, one half of the renowned duo Mert and Marcus, has spent the last four years immersed in the world of gin. While pandemic pivots to new creative ventures have become commonplace, Mert Alice was actually looking for a new creative outlet long before the current crisis. On this week's BOF podcast, Mert speaks with Tim Blanks about finding new creative avenues and resisting the pressure to produce more and more and more. Here's Mert Alice, Inside Fashion. You are launching a gin, and but you're also doing it in the in this very interesting way. I think the way you've set the gin up is as this extremely decadent drink. That that your 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 references. You the, the, when I was reading all the material you sent, I kept thinking of the the Hoisman book Arabur <laughs> against nature, and the main character of that book lives in this incredibly incredibly decadent world of 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 this highly aestheticized environment where everything is a celebration of of gorgeous artifice and you evoke him and you evoke Oscar Wilde and so there's this sense of 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 something quite louche and something um I, I guess more than decadent, something even transgressive a little bit to make a gin, which has this, you talk about the orchid cactus, see you're, you're almost eroticizing this drink in a way. And, and that seems that, but that, that seems to me, given your work, which, you know, some your work has produced some of the, the most erotic images of the, of the last few decades seems very much like, am I, am I wrong in saying in keeping with your own kind of, outlook on life i think whenever i do something to, to to if i take the responsibility of doing that i always inject myself into it so it's always my point of view and it's always it's true to me so all the elements you 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 just told me about is probably part of my artistic point of view and that comes with it. That comes when I make a dinner for my friends, that comes when I'm gardening, that comes when I'm making a gin. For me, what was interesting, uh, when I was building the gin, I remembered how as a young boy and a young man, I was inspired in the movies of this good life, of good way of drinking, you know, good way of holding a glass. For me, you know, the manicure of the lady and the ring that is holding the glass. And it's like, how is all that? All is that a poetry? So I wanted to make a brand. I wanted to make a gin that sort of invites us back to that world a little bit, where sound of a glass matters, where tone of a cello matters, where perfume of you know, of, the, of, of, of a guy and how close to me that person is matters. So the music matters, the chair matters, you know, the light matters, the candle matters. Is it too much smell on the candle? Is it too little? So I, I loved that sensitivity and I love that sensuality. So for me, there's nothing more erotic than, than, uh, than that. So uh, truly subconsciously, I, I use this word so many times today, Maybe I did all them subconsciously. Um, uh, truly, I didn't try to do it this way. But in the middle of it, I realized I was heading that way. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make a, I said, oh, I think I want to make something that it's, it represents good life. What I mean, good life, good life doesn't mean for me um, uh, an expensive meal or a fancy car. Good life is good thought, good creativity 
good good words, good knowledge, good energy, you know, aspiration, inspiration, all of that. That's where we ended up on Heisman's and Oscar Wilde and you know the organ and we <laughs> we we ended up in that world. So yes, I think for me it's. Um, I always say that to, to my team. I say, look, this is for like the night that never ends. What is that? Every night ends, but sometimes some night doesn't end in our spirit, in our minds. And I, that's what I want, that prolonged night that never ended. So four years ago, my partner said, you know what, you should have your own gin because you're so fussy about a gin. So why don't you make a gin? And I was, oh my God, this is so exciting. You know, we could do something. And I got really excited like a kid, almost like the feeling when I first encountered um, digital photography from analog. So, oh my God, you could do this, you could do that. So first thing I did was like go to um, many distilleries to learn about how gin has been made and you know, what is gin making techniques and so on. So it actually really excited me. And then I said, you know, we could do something very interesting here. So naturally I'm always, um, when I get drawn to something, first it becomes like a, a game, a play. I'm like, oh, I like this, I like, then it becomes a puzzle. And I start, you know, asking questions about why don't they do it like this? But why can't we do that? But can we add that? So it became this like a domino effect of ideas and 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 and, and reality and and experiences. Here we are. <laughs> it's interesting reading um reading all the information that was sent through to me. You work you actually did work with a perfume nose on on this project and yeah. And gin is the most aromatic of all the alcohols. It, it, it's it's composed of botanicals, very fragrant botanicals. I think it's an interesting twist. People usually do a, their brand extension when they do a personal brand extension. It's usually a perfume, and and in a funny way, you have done that. I mean, brand extension. It was actually not a brand extension. Probably that's why I didn't do it that way. Um, for me, it was a natural uh, ambiguity. It came from being very interested on the matter. I know that this is pure pure coincidence because you started working on this four years ago, but coming out of this pandemic, this seems, this is almost like a response. You know, that I, I, I'm, I'm curious because you, 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 during the pandemic, you reached out to people in, in your, you reached out of your isolation to, you, t you started creating a community because before that you realized that how, how I guess, internalized your world was, you know, how- or How selfish we all were. Yes, yeah, yeah, or, or selfish, but also- Yeah. The, the nature of your work, the sort of heroic photographer, you know, it, it, admittedly there's stylists and models and everything, but there is a sort of, I don't know if there is a solitude in that, a natural solitude, but anyway, you, uh, you've you used Instagram to create this, very different kind of community. And you you said you were looking forward to embracing the world again. And, you know, I sharing drinks with friends obviously is a is a very easy way to do that, isn't it? I mean, the uh, in that period, I, I guess in the pandemic period, I was very much, uh, you know, we I think like all of us, we were all questioning life and ourselves. And what I realized is how precious we all become, become with ourselves and how distant we become to reality. So for me, I was co connecting with the young artists and I was trying to put them into the same platform as me and my friends. You know, I had Mark Jacobs do a picture. I have Jake and Dino's Chapman brothers do a picture. So for me, it was about bringing the, the talents that who couldn't probably be in the same gallery at the beginning almost like they are in the same gallery. So I really enjoyed that. I was, in fact, I enjoyed it so much. I actually created uh, this white canvas for um, expression project for 71. So this is the platform that I'm actually working on at the moment in 71 and trying to build and trying to learn how to do it and so on. But it's very super excited. It's funny, you, 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 you talked about that right now. 
So you solicit yours, you will solicit contributions from people like you did on with the Instagram project, you solicited contributions, then you edited the contributions. That's what I did on Instagram, because I want to inject. First of all, I wanted everyone to do it. So I was like, okay, well, I have to find a reason for this. I said, oh, how great it would be that if we did it together. So that's like you do something and I give you my artistic idea and I finish them like as it's going on to a exhibition. So we did them together. So I had like many conversations with them, you know, oh, can I use this background or should I sit on here or should I not sit on there? So I had thousands of people. I literally was sitting in a in a, in a room for four weeks on my own, night and day with beard on my face and trying to A, communicate with them, B, edit them because some was good and some was bad naturally. So, you know, and explain to them why that was bad and why they had to do it again and so on. So I enjoyed it. You know, I, I come from Turkey. And when I, when I was uh, studying in the music college, I studied piano and cello in the conservatoire in Turkey. Um, for example, I think it was 10,000 people applied in the year that I was gonna be uh, taken to the school but only 110 or 100 people was allowed into the school. So, and there was only one school. So I know what it means to be a young artist with no, no means to expose themselves or no canvas or no camera. And I know this world, I come from that world. So for me, it was very interesting uh, flashback of my childhood and understanding and and respecting where we can take these people to. So I want to do that in 71. I want to create um, a platform for young artists, maybe go to a different country every year, bring them, involve them, uh, introduce them to my artist friends, introduce them to a gallery, do an exhibition, and, uh, and maybe create a one-off bottle uh, facade with an artist, sell, that bottle and 100% of that sale goes to, to another school and I don't know, some kind of a, some kind of a artistic give back I wanted to do. And I think it's going to be really interesting when it starts happening. Do you, th do you think this interaction would have happened without the pandemic? I'm very, I'm very keen on silver lining stories, you know, because I think we all need them. I think, I think we are very much on I was, we are, I was. I was very much on a go, go, go for the last 30 years, actually. And how, how, how exciting and how, how beautiful, you know, people liking your photos and respecting your point of view and you feel better and better every day and you earn money and you buy better flowers and you wear better clothes and so on. All that is beautiful. But what I realized on the pandemic that we also never stopped and we become too precious and we become too selfish and we became too much about ourselves and we became too much about, our, about uh, living for the audience and, and the hand clap. And did, did I have any other values left if all failed? Did I, can I survive with just gardening? You know, can I survive uh, without any of that? So you come to terms with reality and that's what happened to me in pandemic. So. I realized that there's more to life than just work. So, and it brought me closer to, to these people. It made me, give me a reason. I said, oh, if I can excite few people, me sitting down in my fancy garden, having a, you know, a nice espresso, thinking about people that, who, who, you know, live maybe with their families and, it really made me angry, and I said I have to be able to do something. So this was sort of a sort of a reaction to that feeling. I said, "Oh, what can I do to entertain them? And let's get the art out of them." Everyone's been wearing pajamas the whole time, including me. Um, I said, "What can we do to ignite something here?" And it really did. I had people crying on the phone saying, "Thank you for getting me out of this," and you know, putting my lipstick on, and you know 
painting my husband's back for the picture or, you know, taking my curtain down to make a, 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 a backdrop and so on. And they were, they, were, they were excited. And that excitement is, I guess, another form of, you know, applause. You know, it's not just hand claps. It's another form of applause. And I loved it. I loved doing something with them, achieving something for them, with them, gave me a kick. You've become a much better person. I become a much better person. <laughs> and how um, how is this going to impact your work going forward? Do you think you you're looking at the world through new eyes? So, at what what do you see already happening to you professionally? For me, I think what's important now is the weight of the work, weight of the. Uh, the, the, the opus wait for of the 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 photo or the 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 bottle or or the video you know i was doing a lot of things now i'm 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 i realize miss craft not just on my work i miss craft in general i missed seeing this sacrifice and i miss seeing you know i miss shedding a tear for a dress or uh, going crazy about a about a musician and I think this is what I'm looking out there and this is what I'm looking in here inside me. So I guess I will do, uh, I will do less work. I will um, evaluate more and I will take it slower, take it one step at a time. <laughs> where, where do you see your work coming out now? I mean, we look at magazines, magazines are not what they were in, in, that there was a, there were the glory days where you were where your editorials were you know changing the way as I said people look at fashion people look at clothes and so on. What do you see happening in that world now? Well, we are I guess going through a very big change. We are going through a very big renaissance of understanding and expression because we now have a lot of digital contents. We now are changing the way we approach to image we're changing the way of we look at shows and fashion and and so on so we have one uh, thing to do to get on with it to understand it and how can i express myself with today's language but what worries me is the disposal values of today's language. What I don't want to do is do disposable art. And I don't want to look at it. I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to eat it. I don't want to touch it. I want to now really feel the craftsman. I want to feel the artisan. I want to understand the reason behind that red. I don't want just the red. So I'm hoping we all go that way. Humanity. Yeah, humanity and uh, gratification and understanding. We need time. We are so yes, fast. Yes. Time to understand yes. things. We need to. We need time to ask a question to the artist before turning the page, before flicking the, the thing. We need to say, "Oh, but why was that blue was so muddy?" Because I'm sure there's a, there's always a reason for that muddy blue. <laughs> gratification, but not instant gratification. I mean. Yeah. It's I remember when you started and people were saying, oh, here are the heirs to Guy Bourdin. And I, I think about how in a pre-digital age, his photos were crafted, his, yeah. the way his, his images were composed. And I feel, you know, I feel the, 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 kind of the rebirth of a kind of humanity, but also, I guess, artistry as well. I mean, the human yeah. hand. Yes, I think so. I think, I think, what happens is, in my opinion, when there is a, a lot of something, we always look for, oh, there must be a better version of that. You know, when there's a, you know, 100 green apples, when you see a red apple, you say, oh, I want the red one. So I'm hoping we take more time now with our work, with our expression, and we edit better, we evaluate better, I don't know. I'm 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 excited. I'm excited about uh, the new generation, and I'm excited about 
the new music. I'm excited about a uh, new artist. I, I just wanna, I just wanna have time to pause and digest and uh, enjoy it. And do you feel 71 is a kind of curious embodiment of all of that in a way that there's the the level of artisanship in it, the precision, the um, the concentration, and the the, the the very idea of distilling because you know, we, one thing that we've come out of this period with is, is everybody wants to distill their experiences. They, they, they want to deal with what's important and what's meaningful. And, you know, in a funny way, it might be a stretch, but the notion of this gin that you've created is a sort of liquid embodiment. Look, it was a year and a half ago, this gin was done for all for everyone except me. <laughs> so I, I had this tireless, relentless journey for perfection. I was just gonna, I was gonna do it to my way. So, you know, it was, the bottle had to be perfect and the perf what is perfect? I guess. Yes, is, is perfect possible? As perfect as possible. Perfect is perfect, po is perfection perfect possible? possible? I mean, I think what it is, is in my book, the perfection is my, desire okay my desire how i want this to be is my desire so for me as close as i get to so that is getting as perfect as possible so you know and sometimes there are no names to your desires there are no centimeters or uh, scent descriptions you know there is there's other ways of experience so this takes time so for me uh, the, the work on the bottle, I spent a long time and the work on the, uh, the branding, who, which I worked with Ezra Petronio, um, worked on the liquid and uh, the casks. And I tried literally, I can say probably between 500 to 700 distillates. And if we come to my house one day, I have all these cabinets full of trials and they're all 71 <laughs> you know they're all was you know roots to 71 and then so you know you would touch one they'd be like oh that sounds like this and that feels like that and but it's not feeling like this enough and you will open the other one oh but this one has well you know it was just never ending so yes it's about craft 71 is about genuine gin making and one more thing I want to add there. For me at the beginning, what was very important, I wanted to believe in what I was doing because I didn't want it to feel like this is, a, this is an extension of me and it's like a brand. It, it was not like that. So I wanted everyone to know it was not like that. So for me, I had to learn gin making. I had to learn bottle making because I'm a control freak. I had to do... I have to be part of everything. So uh, I genuinely worked on every part of it. You know, I was there in the distillery, you know, me and Tasso would go to, to, to Rotterdam and lie on the floor of the distillery and, you know, until four and five in the morning when they were waking up and so on. What happens afterwards? What, 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 if 71, when 71 is a hit, do you what what do you see yourself doing after that? I mean, this is this feels like such a singular project, and yeah. I, I I imagine there'll be there'd be people saying to you, "Well, what next? What are you going to do now?" I don't know, Tim. I think I'm 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 not a very settled settled person. Actually, I'm I'm always on the search. I, I welcome the wind and what wind brings. Let's say. So if, if I like the smell of it, touch of it, temperature of it, I grab onto it, I fly with it. So I, I don't know, but you know, you never know, let's see. <laughs> How do you plan to distribute it? Well, it is a very small batch, first of all. And therefore I wanna start with a very small place, a very small amount of bars. Like for example, I'm just gonna start at the Chilton Hut Firehouse. You know, it's kind of a, there's a lot of values to it. And besides commercial values. So therefore, you know, it's not just how much it was sold, it's how it's sold or where it's sold was kind of important. So we're going to start very slow. You have created God knows how many images of extremely beautiful people. 
Do you have anyone in mind? Do you have, when you see now, when you see 71 in a glass held by a beautiful hand, who is that, which beautiful arm and beautiful body and beautiful face is that hand attached to? Who, do, who, would, you, who would you imagine? I imagine Kate. I imagine Maria Carla. I imagine Irina. I imagine Lily. I imagine, oh my God, so many, so many of my girls. I imagine Guinevere. I imagine Malgosia. I imagine Madonna. I imagine, you know, everyone. Uh, Enemy, yeah. you know, I imagine all of those girls that, I mean, you know, I don't really have a giant portfolio of models and actresses I work with. I kind of keep going around the same people for the last 30 years, 28 years. So I guess they are with me, I'm with them and they're with me uh, physically and, and, and emotionally is because there are certain aspirations in them. There are, they are sort of, there are the girls that, some part of them is me and I want to be like them maybe. So, mm -hmm. so therefore I, I, I always think of them. And when I was designing a bottle, I thought of them all. I, when I was thinking, oh, how would she hold it? How would she wear it? How would she drink it? How would she t touch it? And, you know. This is going to be some crazy advertising campaign when you, when you get around oh, to it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Matt, thank you very much. If I walk over to Chilton Firehouse now, I can have a 71 on ice. Well, in, not yet. In, in a week's time, you will. <laughs> lovely to see you. Very lovely to see you. Thank you, Tim. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the BOF podcast for our look inside fashion and how it connects to currents in the wider world. If you're not yet a BOF professional member, join today with our 30-day risk-free trial and benefit from exclusive access to agenda-setting analysis you won't find anywhere else. The BOF podcast is edited and produced by Emma Clark, Kate Bartan, and Kevin Bobby Blanco in the BOF studio team.